Hello, I'm Ed Arnold, Security Solution Architect and Application Security here at Qualys. In this session, I'd like to talk to you about the security risks of APIs and how you can leverage the Swagger and Open API specifications, along with some Qualys capabilities, to secure your APIs. Over the last few years, there has been an immense rise in the usage of APIs. In fact, a 2018 study by Akamai showed that 83% of web traffic was API traffic. There's a number of reasons for this increase. The primary ones are mobile applications, which talk to APIs on their backends. Also, IoT devices, and many, a growing number of web applications. The popularity of microservice architectures has also led to this increase. Microservice architectures are more resilient and reusable, and use APIs for their communication. Also, there are vendor APIs and public APIs. You may use some of these APIs with the Qualif products today to integrate with other systems. Of course, as you might expect, with the rise in APIs, we've also seen a rise in API breaches. A good place to look at API security news and breach reports is apisecurity.io's Twitter feed. And on this slide, you see examples of some of the high-profile breaches that have occurred over the last year alone. Additionally, we just saw an example of an authentication bypass on an API with the SolarWinds breach. So, in fact, due to all these security issues, recently the OWASP organization has released a new top 10 list called the API Security Top 10. And it's shown here. The number one item is Broken Object Level Authorization, or BOLA. This is a common vulnerability and does also occur in web applications, although there it's frequently referred to as IDOR, or Insecure Direct Object Reference. Many of these items on this list are similar to the um, web application top 10, but there are some spe special unique ones to APIs. So in the early days of REST APIs, there's really no standards, and REST APIs were written in a number of different ways. Over the last few years, that's changed. Uh, Swagger and OpenAPI have become the de facto standard for documenting your APIs. And there are many tools uh, in the specification that allow for hardening. So let's just talk about some of those basics of Swagger. Uh, it's simply a way to describe a REST API in a machine-readable way. Typically, the format of the file will be JSON, although YAML is also supported. And if you see Swagger called uh, OpenAPI, it just means it changed from version 2 to version 3. Not much else changed but the name. Um, there were some obviously some additions to capability, but really we're talking about the same thing here. Swagger in version 2 and OpenAPI in version 3. Similarly, if you see OAS, it just stands for the OpenAPI specification, again analogous to the other terms. Typically, you'll find these files from your development teams, the folks that are developing the APIs and doing functional testing frequently will have these files. Um, and some of the tools that they may use to create APIs may output this file as well. Although those files typically do not, or those tools typically do not have uh, security in mind. So if you've never seen a Swagger file before, here's a version, here's an example of a Swagger version 2 file. This one is from the Fitbit website, and at the top we can see that it's a Swagger 2.0 file. Then we have a host, which is the URL for the file, the scheme being which protocol is it over, and then the paths, which will be the largest section of the file, which is all the individual endpoints and the parameters that they accept. Similarly, here's an example of an OpenAPI version 3 file. We just see at the top it's specified as OpenAPI 3.0.0. Again, it's very similar. Although one difference is you'll notice a version that's also in the info section. This version is for versioning your API. This isn't the version of the API specification. This is to allow revisions of your API. So let's look at an example of some specifics, and we're going to look at the Uber API. And here we have five endpoints that are all GET requests. There's an endpoint for retrieving the types of products. Is it Uber X, Uber XL? There's estimates based on price and time, and then there's also endpoints for user information. So if we focus into the price estimate, uh, here's the relevant portion of the Swagger file. 
This particular endpoint accepts five parameters, although we've only fit four on the screen here. Uh, but those parameters are the product ID, a start longitude and a start latitude, and an end longitude and an end latitude. We see that the product ID is a string, and we see that the other values are numbers of the format doubles. So how does that help with security? Well, we can leverage the specification to harden this API in a declarative way. Again, if we look at the price estimate, we'll start with these three parameters, the product ID, the start latitude, and the start longitude. The specification allows for other characteristics we can add to those parameters, which have been shown here. As we're looking for a product ID, and it's a string, we know that's going to be alphanumeric, and we also can assume a max length of 20. Uber XL, Uber Black, Uber Pool, none of these are very long names. Similarly, we can put some parameters on the latitude and longitude. We know what the minimum and max possible is, um, so we can specify those here to ensure that the API doesn't accept anything that's out of bounds of those limits, as long as the API adheres to the file. There's also some additional security directives inside Swagger, um, not on the individual endpoints. So here we see under security definitions the types of authentication offered by the API. In this one we have basic, we have an API key that's in the header, and it also supports OAuth 2. Individually, on a specific endpoints, you can also specify a security parameter, and you can specify which authentication type that specific endpoint takes. And again, as you saw in the other examples, we also have schemes, which shows the protocol. Is it clear text or is it SSL? The Qualys has been on quite a journey um, supporting API scanning. Starting in 2017, we allowed proxy captures from the Burp Suite tool to allow you to proxy your API through that tool and provide us the logs. In 2018, we started with the ability to automatically parse Swagger version 2. In 2019, we brought in Postman collections, which are very powerful and an excellent way to test your APIs because it allows you to define some additional items, such as passing information from one request to another, whereas you could capture an identifier in a response and use it in the subsequent request. And then in 2020, we started supporting OpenAPI version 3. And coming very soon, we have a new product called Qualys API Security that we're building in partnership with a company called 42Crunch. Qualys API will consist of three components to start with. The first is going to be a static assessment of your Swagger or Open API file. You'll get a score from 0 to 100 and recommended changes to harden that file. The second thing will be a conformance scan. This will be a scan that verifies the API conforms to the contract, the file. If it says it doesn't accept negative values, the conformance scan will test if it does in fact accept negative values. And the third part will be a vulnerability scan. Currently in Qualys WAS, as just mentioned, we can scan your APIs. We'll just be bringing, moving that functionality over to the API security module. And there will be a fourth item in the future, just to give it a brief mention. We also will be developing an API firewall to provide that runtime protection for your APIs. Now, let's take a look at a few demos of the new API security mo module and how Qualys WAS can assist you by scanning your APIs today. We'll start by looking at the API security module. As previously mentioned, this module consists of three components. The first will be a static assessment of the Swagger or Open API file. Second will be a conformance scan to verify that the API conforms to that file. And the third will be a vulnerability assessment which currently exists in Qualys Web Application Scanning, but we'll be moving and adding to API Security as well. To assess your first file, you can just choose the Upload API File button available from the dashboard. So we'll give the API a name, in this case, we're going to use the public eBay API. You can drag and drop your file here and choose Upload API. 
Once the API is uploaded, a static assessment will be performed and a score will be returned. As we can see, the file has already been scanned and returned a score of 35.73. Choosing View Details will go inside. We can choose Static Assessment Results. And here we see the individual issues. Right here in the UI, if you'd like to, you can edit this file. You also can edit the files offline and choose Revisions. Choose Upload API Revision, and again, drag and drop your new file. And choose Upload. Again, this will perform a static assessment. You may need to hit the Refresh button. As we can see, the new version has improved its score to 63.78. From the Actions menu, if you're satisfied, you can choose Launch Conformance Scan. You can choose the domain from the Swagger file, or you can pick your own. You also will choose your scanner, internal for an internal API, or external for one that's publicly accessible. Once you chose those options, you can hit Scan. From the dashboard, you'll be able to view your APIs and you have access to the Qualys query language or QQL to perform searches. The scans menu will contain your conformance scans and your vulnerability scans. And the knowledge base contains all the checks available for conformance and vulnerability scans. It also allows you to filter by the analysis type or the assessment type. And then you can further drill down into the subcategories of issues. We look forward to API security being available in early 2021. Now we're going to transition and take a look at the plugin for this module. For this, we'll use the IntelliJ IDE. And here we're using the Community Edition. The first step to using this will be to register on the Qualys site for an API token. Once you've done that, you can install the Qualys plugin. You will need this key to call the APIs. We have a few different Swagger files located in the menu, but again we'll focus on the eBay file. If you right click here, you'll see the Swagger assessment option. You choose Settings, and this is where you'll place the API key you retrieve from the Qualys site. Once you have that, you are able to choose the Assess option. Once that file has been assessed, you'll again return the results, and again we see the score of 35.72. We can see the various issues over here, and we're able to filter them.
course, we'll look at the security issues. And good, there are no security issues in this. We can look at a different type and choose data validation. And here we have several issues. We're able to sort them by severity, QID, or impact. We sort them by impact, we can get the most impactful vulnerabilities at the top. We see that the top two issues are both in the same location in the file. Looking for a pattern and a max length. If we click one of those, it'll take us right to the location in the file where we should make the recommended changes. In the issue pane, we see the description of the issue, an example, a possible exploit scenario, and also remediation guidance. If we drill into remediation, you can see an example of how you should change your file. Here we see it shows us how to do the max length and the pattern, so we can make those changes for data validation. As the description of this call says the path is a two-letter alpha, alpha country code, we know that the max length will be two. We can also specify a pattern here in regular expression format. So we know this is an alpha country code. We can create a pattern to only allow alpha characters. Once we've made our changes, we can assess the file again. And here we see this new score and the improvement, and the number of issues decreased. We fixed those two issues, which counted for eight points, so our score has increased. So as you've seen, you can use our API security module on the Qualys platform itself, or you can use it as part of an IDE and a developer's experience. Now for the final demo, let's take a look at using Qualys in a CI-CD environment. In Azure DevOps, we have a project created called the Tiredful API project. For this demo, we're going to be using a purposely vulnerable API that's available on GitHub. The first step to using the Qualys plugin is to install it from the marketplace. As you can see, the Tiredful API is available out on GitHub, so you can pull it down if you'd like to try this demo yourself. The first step to using the plugin is to go to the settings for the project, go to your service connections, and create a new service connection to Qualys. When the plugin is installed, you'll have a new service connection type. You can just type Qualys and choose the Qualys WAS server connection. You will need the URL of your API server. This will depend on which platform of Qualys you're on, and you can find this on Qualys.com. Next, you'll need to enter your authentication credentials.
if you need to use a proxy server, you can set that here. We will need to give the service connection a name. And choose save. Now we see a new service connection. If you go back to the product, you can go to pipelines. And first we'll look at, just a brief look at what the pipeline is that actually is building a container with this API. So we can see here that this is the build portion, which will pull the code from GitHub, build the Docker image, and deploy it to the Azure Container Registry. Now, of course, to scan this, you will need a running instance, so we need to make sure the container is up and running. This could be part of your deployment or could already be running. See the container is up, but we can go ahead and go to the address in our browser and see that it's still there. This is on port 8000, so we'll add that. And we do see the front end of the API is available. To further check this, we can have this collection inside Postman, and we can try out a few of the calls just to make sure that the API is working before we scan it. So here we have a post to an endpoint called Activities, where the input is a month in integer format, and we can send that request and see that we got a HTTP 200 and some content. We can change the month, and yes, still a 200 and some different content. So it does appear to be operational and ready to be scanned. Before using the Qualys plugin, you also need to ensure that the application is already created inside Qualys. This is a good way for the security team to stay on top of the intake and license limits as they add the applications. For scanning REST APIs, you will need the URL, the base URL of the endpoints, and you'll need some way to crawl them. For API scanning in Qualys, you can choose a Swagger or Open API file. Or you can also provide a Postman collection. So we have provided the Postman collection that we were just working with in Postman and uploaded that to the Qualys web application. Now the scanner will know all of the endpoints of the API. Now that all prerequisites are met, you can take a look at configuring the plugin itself. So under the tasks, you'll have a new task type with the plugin installed. And just search Qualys. And you'll see scan web applications with Qualys WAS. And of course you can scan APIs as well. You will need to choose the new service connection that you just created to connect to the Qualys API. An API call will be made to return a list of, of the applications from your account. So you can select from a drop-down and choose your application. 
The scan has a default name, which includes some environment variables about the build. You have your scan type, vulnerability or discovery, although you always choose vulnerability. You can also set other options as far as authentication option profile or cancel. And then you have your pass fail criteria. So you're able to check criteria. For instance, we can fail if you have zero or more severity fours. You could also fail if you have zero or more severity fives. You also have the ability to fail with specific QIDs. For this example, we'll enter 150022. This is the identifier for verbose error messages. This is a level 3 vulnerability, so it would not be caught in either of the other filters. So we've specified this individually, because perhaps we do not want verbose errors that could provide information that lead to bigger problems. You also have the option to fail the build if we can't scan the application. Once you have your desired settings, you save, and you can see that. You also have the option of adding a display name, so it's a little clearer what's happening during your build. And once we save that and have our desired configuration, we can choose to run the pipeline. We see our job is queued. If we click into there to view the console output, we can see the scan launched. Task is running. Now we're running Qualys. And we see that the scan was launched successfully and returned a scan ID. If we go back to Qualys and go to the Scans menu, we can see that scan kicked off from Azure is now in the submitted state. The scan will take a little while to run, so in the interest of time, let's go back and look at a previous run of this. And here we see the previous run, and we have an error stating that the WAS connector failed due to the configured QIDs found and the severity 5 count was exceeded. You see up in the menu, we have an option, Qualys WAS Scan Status. Choosing that will show our results. We have a summary. We have the stats showing seven vulnerabilities. And we also have the results of the pass-fail criteria. We see that we passed severity 4, although we failed severity 5, and also failed the individual QIDs. If you look at the vulnerabilities, we see there is the verbose error message, severity 3, that caused a failure. And there's also some SQL injection, which would be a severity 5. And that's why it failed that category. Qualys also has these plugins available for Jenkins, TeamCity, and Bamboo, and we hope that you will use them to secure your DevOps process. Great! I hope you enjoyed those demos and saw how Qualys can assist in securing your APIs and creating them securely. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Please feel free to reach out to me at earnold at Qualys.com with any questions or comments you may have. Thank you.